Well, hello. Welcome to the very first episode of Awakening Brilliance, the podcast. This podcast offers insights on how we can bring our soul creations and our heart-sourced body of work alive in this very weird phase of destruction and creation that we have going on right now in the world. So you might have noticed that the world is really, you know, a long way from its true frequency and magic. And if you're here right now, the good news is you are part of the Restoration Project. So we all have a unique brilliance, and I really hope that today's conversation sparks something in yours. So my name is Lisa Murray, and I'm your guiding light for this moment in time as you're here with me. The Awakening Brilliance podcast is an invitation to claim and reclaim the brilliance that each of us was born with, that same brilliance that has traveled with us through lifetimes of creation, that same brilliance that emerges from our heart and soul, that's finding its truth and presence in a multitude of forms. So what can you expect as we journey through these conversations? Well, Let's talk about Awakening Festival, the awakening part of Awakening Brilliance. And for me, this space is where you can really discover more about who you are at your essence, at the very deepest truth of you. And that, you know, that truth is beyond any kind of expectations or projections or societal imprints or, you know, your mother thought you should have done something or, you know, people with your kind of job only do this. There's beyond all of that. There's this you that is love and truth and light. And as you awaken to this alchemy of you, everything in the world has a different context. And you, like the personality you, wakes up to new ways of seeing and being and questioning what you have been agreeing to. And so this is quite an adventure, Awakening Brilliance. It's not... um, you know, not something that you can just listen to and go on with your day. It's going to it's going to activate things in you. It's going to actually bring you to thinking about things in different ways. And, you know, the etymology of awakening, and by etymology I mean like the, the original meaning of the word, is to spring into being, to arise, to originate, and to be aroused from sleep. Now, when we think about this, like that's quite – a lovely set of experiences on the whole. So awakening is to see what has so far been unseen and to become an original and unique expression of the being that you are. Because, you know, there's so much in this world at the moment that's very much about fitting in and being part of, you know, what the going thing is. And yet, as we bring our unique expression alive and awaken the world, the world becomes richer and more beautiful. And as we open our eyes and our senses and our hearts, we awaken to new ways of living and creating. So it seems like a fun experiment to me. Now let's explore brilliance. It's one of my favorite words, brilliance, and I've used it on and off for different things over the years. And Again, I want to be playing with the broadest expression of brilliance on this podcast. So brilliance can mean shining or sparkling with light and luster and brightness and radiance. And originally, brilliance was applied as a description of precious stones. So yes, we are indeed precious. We are diamonds, diamonds in the rough on this very interesting planet that we're on right now. So brilliance can also refer to our genius, our magic, our excellence, our magnificence. And in recent times, I just want to say that it's been limited to this sort of description of, well, how smart we are, you know. We'll say someone's brilliant if they're really smart, but that doesn't take into account all of the other ways that they could be brilliant. And that's what I really want to explore on this podcast. So, You know, it's really important that we reclaim this brilliance that we were born with because it is innate within us. And I just want to note also that a genius was originally described as a guardian, deity or spirit which watches over us from birth. Isn't that so beautiful? And how beautiful that we can begin to claim guardianship over the expansion and expression of our own soul and our own presence on this planet. So in some ways, you could say this podcast is an invitation to the dawning of the beauty and magic of you. 
in your purest and most radiant essence as a gift of possibilities to this world and, of course, to the earth, as in the nature, 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 nature. It seems a lot more thrilling to be playing with that than being some kind of workhorse or slave, maybe we could say, to societal programming, doesn't it? Like, you know, I think we don't realise that we're in a system. School is a system. Corporate jobs are a system. There's all these systems. Universities are a system that sort of want to put you into boxes. And, you know, I'll never forget, I um, had quite a career in shopping centre marketing in my 20s. And at one point I was like, okay, I've had enough of this. I do not want to do that anymore. And Every single recruitment agency agent just wanted to put me in the box of that's the job that I do because I was good at it, right? And yet I didn't want to do it anymore. And I think that's the whole thing about these all these boxes that we end up with in by mistake quite often, either by mistake or we, and I know you can say there's no no accidents, no mistakes, but that's not what I mean. It's kind of like we don't mean it to become a box, okay? And so one of the things of Awakening Brilliance is how can we unbox ourselves? How can we literally keep ourselves on a path where the new is welcome, you know? And there's lots of, and when I say the new, the new and the original is welcome because it's easy enough to do something that's new, but for it to be original and for it to be um, of value to other people and even to ourselves, that's something else. And that's part of the brilliance that we want to awaken through this podcast. So what can you expect if you keep listening? Well, a wide variety of explorations and experiments and what I'd call exquisite ex eccentricities as we do as we dive deep into how we can once again live as powerful beings of light love and the contribution that we're designed to be we didn't come here to do what other people want we came here to create beautiful new possibilities some of these episodes will be solo and some will be interviews and I may even do the occasional panel if I feel it at the time because sometimes it's really cool to get a lot of different perspectives in one conversation. And we're going to be exploring, well, how people can bring their body of work alive and a light in the world so that others can be inspired by their creations. And we'll also begin the awakening process where we look at all of our own assumptions and actions so that we can seek more brilliant ways forward. Because, you know, that old story of what got you here won't get you there. And that's the place we're in. So... Today, we're exploring reclaiming our brilliance because that really is the first step is actually acknowledging, yes, you know, I, I have brilliance, I am brilliant. And that's for each of us to do for ourselves. And one way to start this process is to gently just notice, well, what's one area where you've maybe dimmed your magic a little bit, where you've settled for a state of being less than rather than the joy of being too much, right? <laughs> Or where you have decided that you can't be brilliant because you haven't yet identified that wonderful, uniquely original space where you thrive. And I, I see this quite a lot, you know, because sometimes people will go through a series of experiences in their life where life shows them a, I want to say a mirror, but it's it's not a true reflection. Let's put it that way. It's not a true reflection. Life shows them a mirror of what they haven't yet chosen to be or that they, you know, the situations that they've gone through have really felt like, well, that's just too difficult. And it's time now to reclaim those parts of ourselves, those parts that never felt they were quite enough, that they couldn't quite get to where we wanted the rest of our, our, our life and our world to be. So have a quiet chat with this part of you that's not fully flourishing right now. What's it asking for? What does it need that it didn't receive in the past? And from that, what could you offer this, what I call a tiny immense cloud? It's like these little clouds we have, you know, they're just little sort of, they're not sparks of light, they're clouds. And these little clouds sometimes need to be rearranged so that we can allow a tiny chink of light into that dark space where all the unbrilliant things are hidden. 
<laughs> and yes, I'm going to make up words as we go along because it's so much more fun that way, right? And one of my brilliances is creativity and I love to apply it to pretty much everything. So unbrilliant, you know, that's what happens is all the unbrilliant things land in these little clouds, pockets, pockets of clouds. And we just keep carrying them along as if they're baggage. But yet we can either just put them down or we could love this part of ourselves that hasn't yet had the chance to flourish and sparkle. And, you know, that could be really much simpler than we make it because often, you know, we think that we have to receive the change from the situation that the mess was made in. And actually that's not true at all because the change can come from, you know, opening your heart to an animal in the street. Like this is one of my favourite things is walking down the street and just being really open-hearted with all of the animals and the babies. And it's really amazing what can happen from that because I'll be able to tell just from that how open I am to the world on that particular day, how much my light is shining. and you know, if because of the responses that I get back. And, um, you know, I went to the farmer's markets on the weekend and literally I, I was there much later than I would normally go. And I would have had four or five different little groups of young girls, like, you know, preteen, all going, oh, my gosh, I love your hair. And, like, maybe when I go out I'll get one or two people like that. But to get four or five in a day, I was like, oh, it's there's a shiny, sparkly Lisa out in the world today. And so this is the thing, you know, because as we bring the shiny sparkly, we offer that shiny sparkly as a gift to those cloudy pieces. And so it might be as simple as smiling at a stranger or skipping instead of doing a daily walk, you know, skip, skip along to wherever you're going or allowing yourself to, to write or to draw or to paint, even if you think it's terrible, because we all start somewhere and, you know, you could paint those clouds away. You could literally paint them and then paint over them. And so the target is, is never perfection. Okay. The target is expansion and wonder and beauty because that's how the light shines through. And I, I just want to add here, like, I think we get into habits of complaining or of judging or of, you know, doing, you know, things that don't really allow our light to shine. Um, or we get into um, repetitive thinking, you know, where we think the same thing over and over again. And all I'm saying to you today is just Find a little chink in that armor. Find a little chink where the light can begin to shine through because that's where the magic is going to begin to expand. So I wonder, what is the beauty of you that you've never dared to acknowledge? And this may be something that is actually visual or it might be a direct transmission of love from your heart. It might be your slightly quirky habit of talking to the trees and um, Oh, now I have to tell you that story. So whenever I need to find a new place to live, I, I, I work out where I want to live and then I go and talk to the trees and I say to them, hey, I'd like to live around here. Can you let me know when there's a place available that would work for me? And I give them a bit of a chat about what it is that I would like. And it is absolutely incredible the places that I get to live in. Like at the moment, I'm living on this multi-million dollar property with lots of horses and trees and it's all green and beautiful. And yes, it's a, a relatively small apartment but because it's not the main house, but it is actually very peaceful and quiet and all of the things I was asking for, beautiful spring water. And so this is where your slightly quirky habits are the things that actually create the magic and the brilliance that you're seeking. And when we cut those pieces off because we go, oh, well, no, I can't do that. People will think I'm crazy and you might think I'm crazy, but I tell you what, it's worked for me many, many times now. So I'm not giving it up. <laughs> so when we do these quirky things or we explore topics that nobody else has the slightest interest in because they don't see it through our eyes, right? Like people could be like going, Lisa, what are you talking about? But it's actually when, when, you, when you begin to see something through someone else's eyes, then you go, oh, I see why that's fascinating. I see why that's brilliant. And this beauty that we we need to show the world. It's part of our brilliance. So promise me that you'll allow some space 
for exploring the beauty of you this week. And, you know, even if you start by noticing the moments where you feel the lightest and the most sparkly, just seek more of those moments because your awakening must have a glorious glowing space to land. So as you awaken to more, it's got to have somewhere to land because otherwise we get all in our head about it and that doesn't really work, right? So now you may be wondering, who is this voice, this vision of red hair and creative alchemy that's inviting you to magnify your brilliance? It's a good question. I'm a writer, I'm a mentor, I'm an artist and an alchemist of the unseen realms and that takes many, many forms. So being quite multi-creative, I'm not a fan of labels. I do know that I'm here to bring light to that which has lived in the dark for eons and eons and eons. And this does take many forms. Like in the course of even just this life so far, it's taken so many forms that sometimes I'm amazed that there's still more, right? And yet it always includes this space for healing and transformation and creative self-expression. And so I just invite you to start thinking about, well, what does your space of brilliance include? You know, another thing mine includes is that I really love asking really powerful questions because when we ask questions and when someone asks questions of us that we haven't thought about before, it draws out our brilliance and our wisdom and, and even our capacity for embodying light and shifting consciousness and, and listening really deeply to the knowing that we have. Because, you know, there's so many people that want to tell you the answers. And I had an experience of this just recently where someone was determined that they could tell me how to run another business that I have with my siblings. It's completely separate to this podcast. And we'd already done all the things this person was saying, but he was just intent on telling me how to do it. And he didn't realize that I wasn't asking for her how. I didn't need, I didn't need that, that information. So We've got to also know when to listen to our own knowing and when actually there's a value and a gift in listening to someone else actually ask questions and explore different ways of, of looking at the world because that's where all brilliance emerges from. So my exploration of brilliance has been lifelong and maybe even lifetimes. And it's been through all the ebbs and tides of self-doubt, of extreme shyness, of burnout three times, of, you know, working in many different businesses and, you know, going down an entrepreneurial path. I worked for a university for a while. And all of these different experiences gave me different explorations of the light within of discovering who I am without all the thousands of labels that this world loves to plaster us with. And so what if you start making yourself unlabelable, undimmable, un unmanageable, you know, in some ways, because we, we so often like unfit Um, There's all these things that we, you know, we try and define ourselves and like, ultimately we are undefinable. And with that, undefinability comes the brilliance and comes the awakening so as part of my path you know through this awakening brilliance I've written two books one called stop waiting start creating and the other is called living beyond burnout and I've created over 150 online offerings of all different kinds and that includes facilitating live events in over 15 countries and that was all pre-covid of course and um whether I'll go and do that again or not, I don't know. I feel like there's new things to explore. So one of the things that's really fun about my Awakening Brilliance journey is that my voice has a or offers a transmission of love and it also offers an invitation to create the futures that we haven't yet dreamed of. And I'll be really delighted if you receive it in that way. You know, when I first started talking publicly, I was absolutely terrified. And I will talk about this another day on another episode because it deserves going into quite deeply. You know, when I, I left my corporate job and I was burnt out and then I had to actually like, you know, promote my coaching business, my business coaching business. And I did, I was just horrified by the whole thought and I didn't want to put my name on the internet and all these different things. And yet as I came to know myself, 
I realized, firstly, I'd been given a voice for a reason, you know, because the sound of my voice I know is very calming for people. And there's a reason for that. Like it's needed in the world. And who am I to, you know, put roadblocks in front of that and to stop that? So this is where we we come to this sort of crux where we 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 work out what our brilliance is or one one part of our brilliance and then we're like okay but do I want to do that you know and for many years I had this thing of well I don't want to be famous I don't want anyone to know who I am I was a very private person and I still am to some degree with some things but it's it's one of those things where over time I opened up in many different ways because I knew that I hadn't come here to sit in the background and once you know that you can't keep sitting in the background. And of course, I've known that for a long time. And I've been through this last four years, a very, um, what would I call it? An initiation of sorts energetically, let's call it that. And I'll talk about that more on another episode as well, because I feel like it deserves a bit more of a, a story, because I think we all go through these phases, but we don't always know that we're in them. We don't always know what to do with them. All right. So all of that said, here's what I know. Every single person has innate brilliance within. And I want you to hear that, really hear that. Every single person, that includes you, beautiful you. You are this glorious being of light. Now, on the outside, you know, in the meat sack that we carry around, you might be thinking, are you crazy, Lisa? Like, really? Um, no, I'm not crazy. And yes, really, you, you are, you are a being of light. And it's your choice how you, if you express that. So this podcast is your invitation to reclaim that brilliance that you are, no matter how buried it may be, because I'm, you know, walking proof that it's possible. So, you know, some of you will be thinking about someone that you admire that you go, oh my gosh, they can do it, but I can't, right? And all I want to say about that is that they've just done a little bit more of the excavation work to allow that light to radiate further through a larger sphere of influence in more powerful, potent ways. And so, or they've actually chosen to embody the frequencies which most naturally light them up. So we have to let go of control. That's what really comes to, to it is that if we want to awaken our brilliance, if we want to live in our brilliance, we have to let go of control. And so I also want to just make a note here that every single person on the planet has brilliance, okay? Now, you might look around and go, you can't be serious. Some of those people, they're, they're like darkness personified. Well, that's what they're choosing to express. It doesn't mean there's not light in them and it doesn't mean they don't have a brilliance that they could put to, let's just call it better uses. <laughs> um, yeah, so... If they don't claim it and they don't wish to embody it, that's their choice. doesn't mean it's not there. And, of course, if that's you, if you're going, okay, you know, I don't know what you're talking about, but I don't want to be the light in the world, then that's okay. Maybe this podcast isn't for you. No problem. I am not here to drag you towards the sun. So on the other hand, though, if you're here because you want it all, you know there's some part of you that absolutely knows I am here to express this brilliance. I am here to bring light to something. When you know that, even if you don't know what it is, well, you know you want to be the light, the magic, the, the most splendid expression of you. Well, you've landed at the right party. Here it is. So I think that's enough for today. You know you're in the right place. That's really important. So go reclaim a really sweet spark of light that your heart soul has been yearning for because that will feed you more fully than any kind of food, even like chocolate, right? And if you enjoyed this episode, if you would subscribe so you could hear more or you could share with your like-hearted friends or even write a review, that would be really helpful because this is how we create this ever-expanding party of love light on the planet. Are you keen? Hey, let's play. And also, of course, you can find me at lisamurray.co. And if you're feeling even slightly curious, you might want to go there and see. I'm starting to create a whole new body of work and it's slowly finding its way onto that site. So you'll find a few things. All right. Thank you so much for listening. I absolutely treasure your presence here on Awakening Brilliance or watching actually, because I am going to put this on YouTube. Just remember, you are the light of the world, and that's all you need to be, nothing else. All right, much love. We'll chat again soon.